it's very important to have a nice user experience. And while the user is waiting for something to happen, perhaps we can have a placeholder. What if, what if the component, like we said previously at the very beginning, what if the component is super heavy? We won't have a nice experience. Or what if, if the user has a slow connection? Wouldn't it be much better to control that even more and prefetch something for the user? What we have here is this kind of main component. And let's please focus here and specifically into 1.82. And this is the size of main.js. And what we said previously is that we have to improve that a bit. Hello, everybody. Uh, so like I said previously, I'm very happy being here and excited. It's the second time. Uh, I really love being here. I already see some familiar faces and I hope you will enjoy that. So who am I? Uh, my name is Fanny Spordromu. I'm a Google developer expert for Angular. I'm a senior Angular developer at the company ASI. I'm a co-organizer of the Angular Athens meetup. Uh, for those who are not aware, Athens is the capital of Greece, so yeah, I'm Greek. You will suffer with my Greek accent for a while. And I'm an Angular content creator. I really like this kind of title uh, because it gives me, and I give my passion actually to do these things. And if you want to connect with me, uh, these are my uh, contact details for DromWeb, my Twitter or X, Angular Love. For those who don't know this place, go there, check it out. It's an amazing place with great articles and they have some articles there. My official blog, blog profiles at me and my LinkedIn profile. Please uh, connect with me. And this is my YouTube channel, Code Shots with Profanis. Uh, I'm sure that you will find some great content there. And if you go there and you see that something is missing, of course, something will be missing. I have only 60 videos there. Uh, but I will do my best if you contact with me and I will do my best to create a content for you. So go there, click sus subscribe and the ring bell. It's very important for YouTube's SEO. And why you are here. So the, today's talk is about the deferred block. Learn how to use Angular's deferred block to improve performance. And to be honest with you, I have been thinking, how can I start this kind of talk? So the deferred block solves a problem. So I think it's nice to start with a problem. So what is the problem? Let's imagine that we have a page with three different features. We have the yellow, we have the cyan, and we have the purple. If we click the yellow, we can see this kind of page. And if we click the cyan, we will see this kind of page, different thing. And if we click the purple, again, different page, different feature. So we have three different features. Now, let's see the routing configuration. Again, we have three things there. We have the yellow, we have the cyan, and we have the purple. So what is happening is that Angular recognizes that we have three different features. We have, like we said, yellow, cyan, and purple. And during the compilation, it knows that we're going to eagerly load this kind of features. So what is happening since we're going to eagerly load them, we have everything into the main JS. And guess what? The application works just fine. No problem. But perhaps there is an issue there that we have to improve. And this has to do with the Core Web Vitals. So we are violating the LCP, the largest contentful page, and the TTFB, which is the time to first byte. So since we have this kind of violation, we have to fix that. And the solution to this problem is code splitting. And currently, we do have, currently meaning as of Angular 16, we do have some tools of how to apply the code splitting. And one of them is during the routing configuration. So as you can see here, instead of eagerly load that, we use the load component function by providing the path, returns a promise, and then Angular knows what to do. So we have the yellow, we have the cyan, and we have the purple. Nice. So what is happening now is Angular again recognizes that we have three different features. And during the compilation, it knows that we don't want to eagerly load them, but we want to lazy load them. So for this purpose, we have now three different chunks. We have main JS as well, but it's out of this slide. So we have chunk yellow, chunk cyan, and chunk purple. Nice. Let me ask the following. How about if we have a page, a feature which has many components, and we're going to split that into half. And when I say to split that into half, I mean that perhaps we have a chunk cyan, and we want to split that into two parts, chunk cyan one and chunk cyan two. How can we achieve that? 
And again, you might go there, why do we even have to bother and do this thing? So let me tell you the following. So an application might have different flows and each user follows a different flow, right? So perhaps you have the user A, which, fo which follows the flow A, and this activates the chunk Xian one, and then perhaps you have another user which follows another flow, the user flow B, and this activates the chunk Xian two. And this is just a copy paste that I got from, from my VS code. And what we can do to create this kind of chunks is to use this kind of code. All we have into line one is we are providing a path. This returns a promise. And of course, then we grab the component instance. And during, uh, and we have the container f, the VCR, dot create component, and we are providing the instance. Nice. So this is perfectly fine. How about if we have a heavy component, a very heavy component, or if we have a user with a slow network connection, wouldn't it be much better to increase the user experience and providing a loading indicator to the user that something is loading so that the user is aware of that. And we also have to pay attention to manually clean up because if we run more than one the create component, for example, we might have more than one instance. And how about if we have any error? Again, it won't be that hard, to have an error handling in this in this uh, code, but in any case, we have to inform the user that we tried to do something, we failed, and this is your message. So we have to take uh, everything under consideration. And do not forget, we do not have to import this component into the import array. Otherwise, Angular, instead of lazy load that, will eagerly load. And now we have the violation of Changxian 1 and Changxian 2, which we want to have. And now let me introduce you the deferred block. Since we saw the problem, let's see how we can use the deferred block. So a deferred block is a declarative approach of how to create chunks. So as you can see here, we have the app Cyan. This is just the component selector. And just by doing that, we have already a chunk. And what is happening? If you notice here, we have three different features. We have the yellow. At the very below, we have the purple. And in between, we have the Cyan. Into the Cyan, as you can see, we have a component tree. And one of them is annotated, wrapped actually, but let's say annotated with a different block. And now Angular, Angular during the compilation, what it does is that it recognizes that we have a different block there. So it creates a chunk yellow, the chunk purple at the very bottom, and then we have chunk Cyan 1 and chunk Cyan 2. So that easy to create just a chunk. And wouldn't it be much better to have a way to control when to fetch and display. And this is why we have the when keyword. As you can see, into the parentheses, we have defer when something. And into that something is visible, we have to provide a Boolean expression. As soon as this is true, at this point of time, we will fetch and display the content of the app CI. And if you remember, previously we talked about the user experience. And it's very important to have a nice user experience. And while the user waiting for something to happen, perhaps you can have a placeholder. So let's forget about this slide. And now let's now think of a user registration form where you enter there and you have two fields, first name and last name. We have two labels, first name and last name. And then we have the input field where it says enter your first name. And this is a placeholder. This automatically increases the user experience because it guides the user to do something. It helps the user understand how to use this kind of page. And now let's return back to this slide. In a similar way, we have this kind of placeholder. It helps the user know what is happening. And again, for the user experience sake, it would be nice also to avoid having any flickering issue and we can have more control into the placeholder. And that's why we have the minimum, which means that I want the placeholder to be there for a minimum amount of time let's say 500 milliseconds or one second, you name that. And what we're doing with a deferred block is that we are deferred loading. So while loading, we're going to have a loading indicator to the user that something is happening. And again, for the user experience sake, we can control that. I want to display the loading indicator after 100 milliseconds, or you know what, I want to stay there for a minimum one second. So we have more control to help the user. 
and how about if something goes wrong, if something fails. For this case, we have the error block. Okay, uh, so currently what we have seen is that we have the defer when, and then we saw the placeholder loading and error. And it's very important that we have this when thing here, which offers more control. And let's see how can we control that even more. And this is the on keyword, on action. This is actually the, uh, the pattern, doing something defer on specific action. And when I say specific, there are some specific actions that we have to follow. And the first one is idle. If I'm not mistaken, this uses the request idle callback API. And as soon as the browser do not have any heavy duty and heavy lifting uh, task, at that point of time, we will fetch and display the option. Another one, another axiom is immediate. What we are saying is that during template execution, I want to display, to fetch and display actually. And then we have the interaction. So the interaction, here we have a fork, let's say, a branch. So we have two different interactions. We have the implicit and the explicit. The implicit means that, as you can see here, into the interaction, I do not have any parentheses. We will see later on the one with the parentheses. And this means that as soon as the user interacts with this block, and when I say with this block, I mean with the placeholder, because the placeholder at the end of the day will be visible to the user. And as soon as the user clicks the placeholder at this moment, we will fetch and display the CR. And then we have the explicit one. And the explicit, what it tells is that on interaction, who is going to interact? The trigger. And the trigger is a template reference variable here. And when the user clicks, at that point of time, we will fetch and display. Please note that we do not have any click event here. This will happen automatically by the interaction action. In the same way of having the implicit and the explicit, we have the hover. And again, here we have the different on hover, which means that as soon as this guy, the placeholder, it will hover here, at this point of time, we will fetch and display. And this is the explicit one, which means that when someone is hovering, where to the trigger, when we hover over the button, at this point of time, again, we will fetch and display. And this is the last one in terms of combination of implicit and explicit, and I really like this one, the on viewport. Uh, so this means that when the placeholder enters the viewport, and behind the scenes, this is making use of the intersection observer API. And as soon as the placeholder enters the viewport, you know the drill, we'll fetch and display. And then we'll have the implicit one, sorry, the explicit one, which means that as soon as this guy, the button enters the viewport, or whatever, it could be a div, it could be a span, you name that. At this point of time, Google Fetch and Display. And then we have the timer. This is the last action that I wanted to show you, uh, the defer on timer. And this uses behind the scene the set timeout, no more than that. And what it does is that after a specific time, 1,000 milliseconds or one second, the same thing, Google Fetch and Display. Nice. What if? What if the component, like we said previously at the very beginning, what if the component is super heavy? We won't have a nice experience. Or what if, if the user has a slow connection? Wouldn't it be much better to control that even more and prefetch something for the user? And that's why Angular has, again, a declarative approach to prefetch the chunk. And this is done by providing the keyword prefetch. And we can prefetch by using a specific action. And here, what I, I'm trying to do actually is to, to express all of the possible combinations. As you can see here, we have defer on action, prefetch on action. An example could be defer, let's say, on timer of one second, and they're going to prefetch on immediate, which is the template execution. Another possible combination is on and when. And I'm going to fast forward this a bit. Uh, I assume that you get the idea that you can have any possible combination. And then we have when and on, and the last one is when and when. And the idea is the same. I want to control when to fetch and display, and I want to control when to prefetch or on specific action. And now, no more the boring part. Let's go to VS Code and see that in action. 
So what I have here, uh, do I have to zoom in a bit for those that are sitting behind? Any better? Okay, thank you. So I have a very small application here. Let's see that. Uh, this is it. Let me zoom in a bit here as well. I will open developer tools. And all we have here is just, let's say, an Angular survey. And here I have this uh, autocomplete where we have Angular 2 for up to 17. And then I have here just a date, which does nothing. I have it there just for real estate. And if I click Angular 17, then what we have is this kind of survey, which says how much do you like the logo or the documentation or the if block, the for block, the switch block, the defer block, and the automatic migration. This is just, a, uh, just some of them a subset of the Angular 17 features. And this is the application that we're going to test a bit, okay? So let's go back to VS Code. And what we have here is this kind of main component. And let's please focus here and specifically into 1.82. And this is the size of main.js. And what we said previously is that we have to improve that a bit, okay? So how can we prove instead of eagerly load that, this time I will use this guy. I'm going to lazy load that. And immediately the main.js from 1.8, it's 157K. And now we have one more chunk, nice. So this is the, the very first improvement. And now let's go to the main component. Into the main component, into the template, I have just this Angular survey. Wouldn't it be much better this time to create a chunk for this as well? So let's create a chunk. And let me go here. And all I have to do is just provide a different block. Move this guy a bit up. And now let's focus here. Immediately we have one more chunk. And this chunk is the Angular survey component, and this is the size, 150K. Previously, all of this size goes into the chunk of main component, but now the main component is just 1.54. And if we go to the browser, we expect everything to work as expected. So let's continue working with this kind of deferred block. And how about if we want to have just here a placeholder? I will have here my placeholder, and it will be just a placeholder. No more than that, let's go to the browser and I will reload. And as you can see, we have a flickering issue, which I don't like that much. And it's not that nice. You saw that? So let's control that a bit. And what we're going to do is that I want the placeholder to be there for a minimum amount of time. So let's say that I want the placeholder to be there for two seconds. <clears throat> so this time, if I reload, we can see the placeholder. Of course, the placeholder could be something more, more fancy for the user, but the idea is to let the user know that something is happening here. And now let's see the loading indicator. So into the loading, let's say that I want to have just a span here, that something is loading. And again, we can see that we have the placeholder, we reload, we have the placeholder, but we do not see here anymore the loading. So how about if we have any throttling? Or you know what, instead of having a throttling, I will do the following. I will introduce here, defer, and let's say that I want on interaction. As soon as the user interacts the placeholder, at this moment, I want to fetch a display. So we just have this here. Let's also see the network. And if I click, we just fetch and display this kind of chunk. Let's do that once more. Click, and we saw that. But we do not see this kind of loading message anymore. So let's uh, let's have just this kind of thing. A fast G, just a throttling, and we can be like, okay, now we can see that. <clears throat> and we have to wait and wait and wait. It seems that I have very fast, very slow connection. And this is actually one of the problems that we have to solve, right? So let's say that I'm a real user and I have a very bad connection. So how about now if we prefetch that? So I go on to go here and be like, oh, come on. I want to prefetch that on, let's say, immediate. Something like that. So let's now go back again to the browser. Let's remove the throttle, otherwise it will never end. 
And again, I will pretend that I have a slow connection. I click and immediately we can see that there. What is happening is that we prefetch the chunk and we display that to the user. And the last one is how about the error block? So the error block, and again, we can have something like something went wrong to the user. Let me remove the throttling, reload. And what we're doing with the defer block is that we defer loading and we are displaying the error messages when a loading fail, failure happened. So here, let's assume that we have somehow we have a failure error. Uh, sorry, we don't have any network. And if I click, so this is funny. What just happened is that we have already prefetched that chunk. So let me remove that for the sake of presentation. And let's do that once more. So no throttling. And again, let's go offline, just a placeholder, and we'll have the message, something went wrong. So this is some, somehow an interaction to the user, either being a placeholder, either being a loading, or either being an error. Nice. So let's now move on into the Angular survey. And I will focus here. So this is the place where we're going to work a bit. And also, let's pay attention to the chunks. Currently, we have the Angular survey component and the main component. How about now if we create one more chunk for this guy? So here, instead of if, I will have a defer. And this time, I will, I will have here when the form value Angular version is 17. And immediately, we can see that we have one more chunk here, which is 80k. And this, at least, this one is aligned with the presentation that we saw previously that we have different users. So let's say that I'm a user that I don't want to have Angular 17. I have Angular 12. Why do, I, do we even I have to download the other chunk? But now, if I have the Angular 17, we can see it here. So this is the last thing that I wanted to show you of how to use that. And let's see how we can break this thing. So I will go into the main component, into the Angular survey. And as you can see here, I have one more component. I have a dummy component. And let's do the following. I will remove everything. I will also remove the own interaction. So into the main component now we have, uh, what is my chunk? I think this is the one, yeah, Angular Survey. So this is my chunk. So I will copy this and I will go here and just filter with this guy. Uh, where is my filter? Where is my filter here? Network. Where is that? Ah, oh, this one. Oh, okay, thank you. Accidentally, I clicked that button. Okay, so let's scroll further down. And what we can see is that here we have the dummy component as well, which is not something expected, right? What, what we did is that we wanted just to have the Angular survey. But what is happening is that with the fair block, we are loading all the file, the content of this file. And you might think that perhaps this is not that a problem, but how about if we have any, a case where we need to use this kind of selector somewhere else? So let's do that. So I will have now my dummy component. I will go here. I will import. And then I want here, before the defer block, to use my app dummy. So what will happen, you can even see during the compilation that we no longer have a chunk for that. The application will work as expected. Everything will work just fine. But of course, we won't have the nice experience for the user in terms of, in terms of chunks. Not only the user experience, but uh, we have a violation of the core web vitals. So it is suggested not to use more than one component in the same file, especially when using the different block. So let's remove this guy. And yeah, 
all, all the chunks are back. And now let's return to our slides. And we have also to pay attention to the cumulative layout sheet. So why do we have to pay attention to that? What is happening is that at the time that we fetch and display, it shifts all the content down. So it is suggested to use the deferred block below the fault and not above the fault. I'm not fully agree with this one, to be honest with you. I, I would prefer uh, to use a deferred block. If I need to, I would, I would prefer to use that even above the fault. And in terms of the CLS, what we can do is to create a placeholder to have the dimensions, width and height, similar to the content that we expect to get from that component. And by this, we won't have uh, any issue in terms of community, uh, cumulative layout shift. And that's my la last slide. And thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, Are there any questions from the inside? I have one for sure. Okay. One there will there were no angular free version. To select. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, the designer not to. Okay, so we have some questions at the chat. Maybe someone will decide to ask them. You always have the possibility. There is a question from Mugatu. Can we target specific display ports using Defer? No, 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 no. Uh, this is a good question. Currently, there is not such, such option. I say no. There is not such option. OK. And another question from Wojciech. Um, is there a plan to support some offset for viewports trigger? This is so, a very good one. Yeah, so that the loading happens when a component is about to be above the fault. Uh, I remember that I have seen some discussions around this one, but currently this is not supported. And I'm not sure if we can customize that somehow, but currently, no, it, it's not supported. Uh, but perhaps this is uh, one of the topics that it could be nice to have. Okay. Very, nice, very good question. Okay, and another one from Jakub. Is it possible to see what error occurred in error scope? Not yet. Uh, this is uh, this is coming. Uh, they work into that one, and they try to expose this kind of error. And currently, the only thing that we have is a failure. Uh, but yeah, they they work on that one. I'm not sure if they already done that, but at least for the uh, the version they have, they, it's it's not there. Mm -hmm. But I remember that they had uh, they had this kind of case, and they had a request to have this kind of thing, and uh, the plan is to have it. Okay, and that was the last one from the, okay, so there is question on site. Natalia, can you? <coughs> to, here, here, here. There was the first one. Yeah. Yes, so uh, does it mean that it, this defer can replace the road preloading strategy that we already had in Angola? And is it possible to provide our own strategy for defer? Like we do in road uh, preloading strategy, we provide our own to customize it. Our own strategy. So for the preloading, I think that they are serving different purposes. Uh, so perhaps you can have the preloading to load everything and the defer is uh, something. I think we can combine both to have the preloading to load everything in terms of your uh, modules or whatever command that you have. And perhaps you can also have this kind of thing. I don't see this as a replacement, to be with you. And the reason is that uh, in some applications, you have the preloading like the core functionality are going to preload everything. But here, in this case, uh, the goal is not to preload everything. The goal is to preload whatever you have to preload to prefetch actually for the user. Uh, and the second part of your question? Is it possible to provide our own strategy for deferring? So we have the default, and could we provide our own strategy for deferring? Uh, what do you mean to, def uh, to provide? So into the defer to provide our own strategy in terms of action? Yes. So can we have ID immediate uh, to, to have a custom? No, currently no. There is no uh, such an option. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice to have something like that. Good question. 
Okay. There were some additional. Uh, greetings. Uh, I would like to ask uh, regarding the. Uh, you have shown us these uh, prefetch on the mediate, mm -hmm. and uh, the question is like, at which moment does it mean that Angular uh, starts a request to download the file? Like, when this mediate actually happens? So, the, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the immediate happens during the template execution. Uh, during the template execution, it fetches this this kind of chunk. So it means it's even before the component is rendered. Um, at the same time. At the same time. At the same time. Like it's rendered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I was just going to say on the question around the viewport. Um, if you're providing explicit, then you should be able to take something that's above that component. So you don't have a threshold on the component that you want to render. But if you have explicit on your viewport, you should be able to provide the um, uh, uh, an element prior to that component that you want to render, right? I took to my dollar in that way. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Yeah, that's a good one. How would you estimate size of components when it is work to generate? Uh, this is this is per case. So you can imagine that you have a component with charts, and you want to enter that, and you are not sure that uh, all the users want to see this kind of charts. So in this case, I would be like, okay, I want to defer that. So some, something like that. It's, it's, it's per case of how to defer this thing. So I remember that we had a discussion about, is it okay to defer everything? So no, it's not okay to defer everything. Uh, so you have to defer whatever you feel that violates spe uh, something specific or it's something very heavy. Uh, so like I say, it's a very, very, very custom thing of going to defer that. You are free to use defer everywhere, uh, but I think it's, not worth tying that. Any other question? So we have also some from the chat again. So from Dmitry, it is possible to load in the third party li library? To defer a third party library. Think it out loud. If you have a component and that component using uh, something from a third party library, if this is the question, uh, then at this point of time, perhaps we will uh, load this one. It's, it's the same thing with the charts. So instead of loading eagerly, we will lazy load the chunks uh, on specific action on when something is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then another one from Oleg. Mm -hmm. Is the items under default block visible in DOM? Under the defer block, if they are visible, I'm not sure if I. No, no, no. Since we do not have yet the component there, okay. So since we do not have the component, it, it's not like we are hiding that. Uh, we do not even have the component, so the browser is unaware of the component. So the component will be familiar with that as soon as uh, we have uh, the condition happy. Yeah, another one from Vikash, but I am not sure whether it's specific enough. So, can we use defer in micro front end? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not expert on micro front end. So, if I say something, perhaps yeah. I will derail uh, this uh, this guy. So, mm -hmm. could okay. be, and uh, perhaps it would be also a good uh, place to experiment. Yeah, and the last one from Jakub. Is it possible to define replay if error in chunk downloading occur or trigger that manually in error block? Yeah, I have been thinking of that one. Perhaps what we can do, let's say that we have when, when something is happening, and during the error, I didn't try that, but perhaps during the error block, we can toggle that flag and have a button to toggle that, something like that. I didn't try that yet, uh, but it could work, mm -hmm. probably. Okay, fine. So that were all of the questions. So thank you for this great and insightful presentation. So like me, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh,
let's imagine we have a long main page it consisted of 10 screens components is it good idea to put Dapper for all components except for screen i mean Dapper on the report you know? uh, can you please repeat that one i think that i, I didn't fully understand the question okay, okay. Uh, we have a um, main page consisted of two 10 components right 10 components okay. yeah every component uh, is one screen let's say right and uh, from second component we put Dapper on it so it loads only on report okay yeah is it good idea or no okay so uh if i got to understand you're saying that you have a page and in that page you have multiple components and into the into the viewport perhaps you have the template of component one and while the user scrolls down can see yeah, yeah. the other yeah yeah it's a perfectly fine idea to have something like that okay thank you Okay, so that was for sure probably the last one. So let's make an applause for Fanny's. Thank, well, thank you very much. And I would like also to, uh, to thank this guy, uh, Matt, who was the first guy that we had a per coding in the deferred blog. When, when this got released, we were like, let's give it a try. Let's play around. So it was... Uh, it's a good one, so thank you and applause to Matt as well. Thank Thanks. you.